Right, well here we have the S300, the latest camera from Suku. I tested the S100 which gave excellent results and I'm expecting this is going to be really good. It's got gyro stabilisation, touch screen, it does take an external mic, records native 4K, so I'm going to get it on charge, slip in a suitable card, none of these action cameras come with a card, you'll need a good class 10 UHS-1 which is ultra high speed if you want to record 4K. So I've got a Samsung 32 gig Evo here, but while it's charging take a look at the accessories you get here which include this rather cool hard case I can see there's a red light on the front here it turns green once the camera's fully charged let's take a look at what else you've got here first off of course you've got the waterproof case which actually comes with two backs I suspect this is a touchscreen back because that feels fairly soft and flexible probably waterproof but only to a few meters Plus you've got a solid back, no doubt you could dive with that. And if you're not familiar with it, the way you remove the backs is, take that off. You can see there's a little slot there and these clip in and out with some force. Well, actually it's not too bad on this one, but it has to be done carefully. Right, case looks nicely made. Don't forget to peel off these stickers, otherwise you'll screw up the video. And one last thing about these gaskets are very tight, form a tight seal as they need to. So when you close it, make sure you squeeze the back before you do the clamp up because it's tight and otherwise you may just end up breaking the bracket or something. Uh, after, after use it does ease a bit but that is very tight as it would need to be to be waterproof. You'll note it's got one bracket mounted on it and the thumb screw. Now somebody asked me how you use the accessories with these kind of cameras. I thought it was fairly obvious, but you've got standoffs here that go between the brackets and the slide-in bracket. You've got a couple of mounts here and some sticky pads so that you can stick these onto a flying helmet, cycle helmet, motorcycle helmet, skateboard, whatever you want. And these brackets just slide in and out, clip in and out like that, so dead easy. And you've got two or three standoffs so that you can mount it which way, twist it that way, twist it that way, sticking out, upwards, sideways, whichever way you like. Plus, I wondered what this was. They call it a screwdriver in the manual. It's actually for tightening the... goes that way. It's actually for tightening the thumb screws on here. Not that you really need to, mostly. Plus, there's a quarter inch tripod mounting bracket too. Plus, there's a handlebar mount. Though if you're on a mountain bike, or motorcycle you get better results I'd say by mounting it on a helmet so that covers that you've got a lens cleaning cloth there you've got a USB cable there for plugging in for charging and for downloading your files to your computer you've got the manual of course which looks pretty thorough I can't see any mention of maximum card size in there maybe I'll find out more importantly plus you've got this lovely wrist remote which looks great and it's not on a velcro strap like some of them come with and usually these are something like a £10 extra. It's on a rubber strap, very serious looking bit of kit. No doubt it needs to be paired. In fact, speaking of which, there's a little leaflet there telling you how to pair it, plus a warranty card. And as I mentioned before, all of this stuff comes in a really nice protective case, just the thing to take on holiday with you. Or if you're out and about doing your sport, you can keep all that stuff in there. So that looks great. I think I've covered all that. Once it's on charge, we'll take another look at the camera. I've already taken a few test clips and the 4K was very, very impressive. Lovely colour and very sharp. But we'll have a more detailed look at the camera coming up. So don't go away. Right, so let's take a look at this. First comment is about the case. It's got a rubberized kind of feel about it. So it feels quite firm in the hand. Not, not slippery and smooth and shiny like some action cameras. Now on the front here you've got a 170 degree wide angle lens but you can change the field of view in the settings I think of course you'll get less resolution if you do that. You've got two LEDs here one shows when it's being charged, when it's recording, flashing and the other one is shows when the Wi-Fi is in use. Now this is an eight element lens which is quite a sophisticated lens. This end you've got microphone hole You've got the loudspeaker hole and a little cover here that covers up the USB 
where you plug in to charge and to plug in and download your files. I'm not sure how long that's going to last, but anyway, it's a nice idea. Now this is a touchscreen camera, but you've also got scrolling up and down buttons here. In the base here you've got the battery slot. That just slides out. Battery's in there. And incidentally, while I'm there, you'll notice the microcard slot is there. Now I showed you that I'm using a Samsung Evo 32 gig. It goes in there. You need a decent nail to get it in and out. And I haven't because I broke that thumbnail there years ago, as you've no doubt noticed. And it's never grown properly since. Card slips in there with the logo side towards the screen. Like so. Plus you've also got quarter inch tripod mount screw in the base. On the top you've got the shutter button and of course on the back you've got the screen. Now this is slightly bigger than some cameras. It's a 2.35 inch screen and it's a touch screen. Now the camera records native 4K. It's got EIS, that's electronic image, image stays, I can't say it. It's got electronic image stabilization, that's gyro stabilization. It will take an external mic. If you're into vlogging, that's motorcycle riding and recording or whatever else, paramotor recording and riding. You can also plug in the optional GPS logger. It's got the Sony IMX 377 sensor. The chipset in it is the high silicon chip, which is not one I'm familiar with. And of course, you can use it with a Wi-Fi app. Right, well to turn it on, it's a question of a two or three second press of the power stroke shutter button on the top here. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about the operation of it or the menus because since I've had it there have been a couple of firmware changes and it'll probably change again. These icons here mean I'm in video mode, wide dynamic range, wide field of view, gyro is on, exposure value and I've got a card in, audio is on and that's obviously battery state and I'm in 108060. I mentioned this records native 4K and the gyro actually works in 4K which is unusual. You've got touchscreen options that turns on and off the on-screen display. You've got a settings button there which puts you into some settings. You've got another settings button there which puts you into more settings or you can access these by going through with the scrolling buttons. Now this is the basic menu that lets you change from video mode to slow recording to video lapse, video plus photo, burst photos which is a series of photos with one press of the shutter or normal photo mode. So if you want to take a photograph you just go through to photo, press OK and you're in photo mode. So to take a photograph, either press the shutter button or touch the red dot on the screen. Now I've obviously turned beeps off. Likewise, if you want to go into video mode, just scroll through to video mode. Start recording. Press the shutter button. You can see you've got a light flashing there. And you've got a light flashing on the front there. Nice and bright actually, so if you're wearing it in the case and you're on a motorcycle you can actually see very clearly that that is working. Press again and you stop recording. Now alternatively it's a swipe screen. Swipe up and you've got that menu as well. And there were some other functions but they seem to have changed that a bit in the firmware so um, I'm not going to go into that and I think it'll probably change again but that lets you do the same thing and of course that's return. Right so I think probably it's time to look at some test clips.
8060 with the gyro on and I may well zoom in you can see detail down there in the harbour but I may well zoom in on some of the shop signs here to compare the resolution at 4k and 108060 And another view of the harbour, so that you can see those cottages again from the windows. Also, second there. Lovely winter's day, oh, it's beginning of February. Oh, it's only about 67 degrees. Right, well, we're still at 108060 here, looking at the Golden Hind and towards the old fish market. Much bigger fish market now on the other side of the harbour. And this is into the sun, so it'll be interesting to see how that works. And sure enough, there's a noisy motorbike, just to mess up my audio. But there's some good detail here, the sun keeps going, but not bad for the time of the year. <laughs> Cheers, Richie. Right, see you later. Lovely bike. Enjoy. I'm going to call it now. Eighty sixty with the gyro on, and I may well zoom in. You can see detail down there in the harbour, but I may well zoom in on some of the shop signs here to compare the resolution at four K and ten eighty sixty. Okay, right. My usual favourite test shots. You probably wonder why I use the same shots. It's so that people can actually look at different videos and compare the sharpness and the colours and so on. So some fairly low winter sun here, some nice detail here. As you pan around you can see down the harbour. And there's some lovely detail on the brickwork on this Victorian building and on the shop signs and so on. And these